That's over. That means there's less of this movie to sit through. The plan with Lieutenant Wombat must have worked, because not only has the theater reopened, but like the first night, it is a full house and everybody is happy, despite the fact that a guy was electrocuted and a several-year-old hanging corpse was discovered. Unbelievable! These townspeople are some mighty big hypocrites. I mean, they hate the theater before just because some guy showed porn, and for some reason porn is the root of all evil, but they'll go back to the same theater where not only a guy was killed, but a hanging body was discovered just because it showed family-friendly crap. And just like the last time, the movie is a flippin' documentary. But unlike last time, it shows something that's not so G-rated. Oh, how is this family friendly? And as you would guess, like last time, tonight is gonna have a victim too, and holy crap, it's Napoleon Dynamite! Well, apparently Napoleon is at the movies while his parents go to some PTA meeting, and Napoleon comes up with the idea to sneak his friends in, which involves going into the back of the theater and letting them in through the back door. The hermit sees Napoleon and decides to kill him by strangling him with a belt as punishment for starring in the most overrated movie of 2004. Unlike last time, however, everyone is completely oblivious to this. Remember the daughter Jeannie? If you do, you have some really great memory. She was supposed to go on a date, but ended up working at the concession stand. She only had to work until 8.30 and then she could go, which to me seems reasonable, but even then she throws a big babyish temper tantrum. After storming off, she is spotted by the hermit and is kidnapped. Why would he kidnap her instead of killing her? Oh, right, right, okay. Do you remember that plot device in the beginning? The Hermit's obsession over Jean Harlow? Well, apparently Mitford's daughter looks exactly like Jean Harlow. What's the connection? They look nothing alike! I mean, where the hell is the similarity? I mean, I don't see it. Do you? Anyway, the Hermit has his blonde bombshell and professes his feelings to her. parents say they haven't seen their daughter in a while, so they come up with the conclusion that she has snuck off to her date. So they finish the night without worries, and we finally, finally, FINALLY arrive to the climax of this movie. And, um... Do you want to know how they started? Oh, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer weenie. That is what I truly like to be. They sing the Oscar Mayer song. That is the most unexciting beginning of a climax ever! But, then again, seeing what movie it's in, I really shouldn't be too surprised. After arriving home, Mitford and Jan see Jeannie's very unimportant boyfriend waiting in their yard. And, surprise, surprise, Jeannie isn't there! Mitford, his son, and Jeannie's boyfriend drive off to find her, while Jan goes inside to call the police. And she does but somehow realizes that her daughter is still in the theater and then hangs up on the police and runs to save her. Oh my god. How? What? When? Why? 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 Why would you hang up on the police to go save your daughter yourself? Why? Why? Oh my god. But don't worry, she left a note for the others. Back at the theater, the hermit is forcing Jeannie to watch one of the knockoff Jean Harlow movies and then tries to kiss her. Please, I beg you, just to kiss. But faster than you can say perfect timing in a bad script, Jan breaks in the theater and gets her daughter back. And then proceeds in what is possibly one of the most boring finales of a movie ever. See, what happens is, 
The mother and daughter run throughout the movie theater with the hermit behind them. The hermit's brother, the questionable antagonist, is also in the same vicinity. The two run into the non-murderous brother but run away from him because they can't tell the difference between the two. The two women lock themselves in a room for a little while and eventually run into a bottom floor of the theater while the brothers run to a top floor. The hermit throws his brother off the second floor to his death and Jeannie throws her hands into the brains of a man that she thinks was her captor because she couldn't tell the difference and starts freaking out. While freaking out, her mom, her brother, dad, and boyfriend pull her away. I would show you clips, but nah. That would just bore all of you to death. Unless... I got it! Okay. I will show you clips, but not without some help. So, Benny Hill, take it away. After the whole ordeal, Mitford decides to end his dream of owning a theater and plans on taking his family back to wherever they were. I was the shoe salesman for this. I guess I'll go back to it again. I was pretty damn good at it, too. How'd your daughter? Jeannie. I think she's gonna be all right. I'm gonna let her rest here for a few weeks before we put the house up for sale. Good idea, Weston. And the hermit continues to live in the theater, watching the same generic rip-off Harlem movie that he was watching throughout the course of this movie. <laughs> and there you have it. One of the absolute worst movies to ever disgrace the horror genre. Now, I don't know what the thought process was behind this movie, but they messed up big time. I mean, everything is bad. The directing, the acting, the cinematography, the special effects, the lighting, the editing. It's all bad and pathetically so. And I know I shouldn't expect too much from a low-budget horror movie, but seriously, they could have done a hell of a lot better. Now, you might ask, is there anything good about this movie? Actually, yes there is. In a conversation, I will say something like, I own the meat eater, or have you seen the meat eater? The confused look on people's faces is well worth the 59 cents.